My fellow Idahoans, I'm speaking to you today because Idaho is facing a serious situation that must be addressed. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, as your governor, I have worked hard to protect the lives and critical health care capacity for the entire state, while keeping families safe and businesses and schools open. Every decision has been a balancing act. And while the pandemic response has not been perfect, I do believe we achieved a balance. How can we tell? Because we have managed to prevent a crisis in our hospitals, we have kept our state open longer than almost every other state. Because now, thanks to quick action during the pandemic, Idaho has the strongest economy in the nation and the most financially solvent state budget. With our record budget surplus, we are poised to provide Idahoans historic tax relief and make strategic investments in building Idaho's future for us and our children. Few states can claim that kind of success. We are in the final lap of the pandemic fight. The finish line is close. We are so close to returning to normal. But all that success is threatened by the actions taking place in the legislature right now. Every single state has an active emergency declaration in place to respond to COVID-19. President Trump issued two emergency declarations that remain in effect today. When the Teton Dam broke in 1976, during the 1996 Panhandle floods, whenever there's a devastating wildfire, we initiate an emergency declaration at the request of local communities. So Idaho can access critical federal resources, resources we all pay for to overcome the impacts of the crisis. Every time we used emergency declarations appropriately, COVID-19 is no different. An emergency is, quote, a serious, unexpected, and often dangerous situation requiring immediate action. Let me be clear. Undeniably, COVID-19 is an emergency. Hundreds of Idahoans have died and many more have been horribly sick. Many Idahoans still face the same terrible risk. The COVID-19 emergency declaration was requested by Idaho communities, and it is critical in order for Idaho to receive federal assistance, your taxpayer dollars, to manage this crisis. The COVID-19 emergency declaration has enabled us to quickly cut red tape and increase healthcare access. These are the facts. Here is the myth. The emergency declaration somehow shuts down Idaho or takes away your rights. That is patently false. Amazingly, some in the Idaho legislature are perpetuating that myth and actively seeking to end Idaho's COVID-19 emergency declaration. What does that mean for you, the citizens of Idaho? It means less vaccine, more taxes, and more red tape. It means the vaccine rollout is jeopardized, something that is unacceptable in this final stretch of our pandemic fight. It means cities and counties will have to find funds from you to pay for equipment and support they need to battle COVID-19 in your community. It means hospitals could lose access to critical supplies. It means we lose the funding to utilize the Idaho National Guard to support testing, vaccine distribution, food banks, and medical facilities, something that has been a game changer in the pandemic fight. It means we cannot cut red tape and break down regulatory hurdles that stand in the way of better health care access. It means your federal tax dollars go to California, New York, and other states. It means this terrible pandemic and the disruption to your lives will be extended, not ended. Some members of the Idaho legislature are seeking political gain by perpetuating this misinformation about emergency declarations. They are playing politics, and unfortunately the loser in this shameful game will be you, 
the citizens of Idaho. Members of the Idaho House admit they are not sure of the financial impact of ending the emergency declaration. Why then would you move forward with such a damaging move for our citizens, one that will cost Idaho taxpayers tens of millions of dollars? The Idaho Senate has made it clear they understand the importance of continuing to access federal assistance to overcome the crisis. Why then are you intent on moving forward with an action that will have the opposite effect? I want the people of Idaho know that I have explained to legislators for months the importance of the emergency declaration and the reasoning behind all the decisions related to the pandemic response. I have sought their input and applied their advice to the state's response. I want the people of Idaho to know that I am firm in my assertion that the actions of the Idaho legislature severely jeopardizes our ability to roll out vaccine and bring the pandemic to an end in Idaho. As I have stated over and over, the no action alternative has never been an option. Pretending there is no COVID-19 emergency as some in the Idaho legislature are doing right now, will have the devastating will have de devastating impacts on our lives, our healthcare heroes who are protecting families and our economy. Those who know me know that I greatly value my legislative partners. Cooperation between the executive and legislative branches is required and expected for those of us in elected office to best serve the people of Idaho. However, the seriousness of this situation demands that I speak up. I believe in my heart that what the Idaho legislature is doing is harmful to our people and wrong for Idaho. I urge my partners in the legislature to stop the political gains and do what is right for the people of Idaho. Abandon the myth that the emergency declaration somehow shuts down Idaho. Abandon the myth that the emergency declaration somehow infringes on your rights. Abandon these irresponsible attempts to undo Idaho's emergency declaration, an action that only puts the lives and livelihoods of our families and neighbors in jeopardy. I don't want to be doing this. I don't want us to focus all this energy on the past 11 months. I want us to focus on the future. We have a bright path ahead of us. Idaho's economy and state budgets are outperforming every other state. We have the strongest economy and the most financially solvent state budget. We have stayed open longer than almost every other state. We absolutely would not be in this phenomenal position right now if we did not have the emergency declarations. If we were not able to act quickly during the darkest months of our pandemic fight. Idaho, I will continue to work hard for you and make responsible decisions that help us get through this crisis together. I would like to introduce General Mike Garshek, the leader of our Idaho National Guard, to explain in more details what is at stake if the emergency declarations go away. General. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for the opportunity to tell our fellow citizens how much their Idaho Guard has contributed to the health, safety, and security of our state and nation throughout the last year. It has truly been a historic time for the National Guard, both here in Idaho and throughout the entire United States. The Idaho National Guard 
has deployed to combat operations in Southwest Asia, who fought wildfires in California, and responded to civil unrest emergencies in our nation's capital. Right now, over 300 Idaho Guardsmen are returning this weekend after providing security during our nation's presidential inauguration. Here in Idaho, upon the governor's emergency declaration in March, members of the Guard immediately responded to requests for assistance from food banks throughout the state to help those most in need, as well as providing storage and distribution of critical PPE. Since then, our support has expanded to assisting every health district throughout the state, conducting missions such as patient screening, testing, administrative and logistical support, and most recently, distributing and administering the COVID-19 vaccine. I'd like to share a few examples of the Guard's impact throughout this emergency response. At some of the busiest testing locations around the state, Guard support has helped reduce the amount of time it takes to receive a COVID test by nearly 95%, enabling more people to receive a test safer and faster than ever before. Just in the last month, Guardsmen have facilitated nearly 70,000 COVID screenings and tests throughout the state. Guard support has allowed Idaho's most highly trained and skilled healthcare professionals to focus on direct patient care, while our soldiers and airmen carry out many of the COVID-related administrative and support functions, reducing strain on providers and staff, allowing them to deliver the best possible care to our citizens. As I travel throughout the state to observe your guard in action, the common message from healthcare providers is that the guard support has been absolutely essential in enabling them to provide the necessary care and treatment to their patients. It has literally saved lives. We're currently preparing to activate an additional 200 guardsmen to facilitate the governor's efforts to rapidly distribute and administer the COVID-19 vaccine, making it available to all citizens throughout all areas of Idaho. Currently, every state in the nation is using their National Guard to respond to this emergency. And at a moment like this, just as the Guard begins distributing and administering the vaccine, it is not the time to stand down. Canceling Idaho's emergency declaration would do just that. In order for the National Guard to respond to domestic emergencies beyond 72 hours, a formal disaster declaration is required by law. Also, a critical factor to consider is cost. During the emergencies, such as COVID-19 pandemic, an emergency declaration is necessary to receive, to receive state and federal disaster response funding. In my opinion, it would be negligent to cancel the emergency declaration at this piv pivotal moment, denying the citizens of Idaho the necessary support to ensure their health, safety, and welfare. The brave men and women of the Idaho National Guard joined to serve the citizens of our state and nation in times of need. They never back down from a challenge and they truly live up to our motto of always ready, always there. And I'd like to take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation for the enduring support from our families and employers of our Idaho Guardsmen, without which we could not accomplish our mission. Thank you. Thank you, General, and please express to all the people on the front line, the guardsmen and women that are, whether they're in Washington or whether they're out on the front lines or whether they're ready, uh, our sincere thanks. To the people of Idaho, throughout the pandemic, I have endeavored to protect you, your loved ones, and our economic prosperity. I will never relent in that pursuit. I am asking for your help to finish the fight. Please join me. Contact your state legislators and tell them not to take away one of our strongest tools to end this pandemic and get back to normal. Tell them Idahoans' lives and livelihoods depend on it. Thank you. <clears throat> 